Mancala, Minimax, making YouTube videos. Howdy friends, today we're going to be exploring the game Mancala and how to make a Minimax algorithm to impress your friends and family. Firstly, what is Mancala? Mancala is a game where there's n number of rows on the top and bottom, and players are tasked with the objective of collecting the most beads. The players take turns moving in a counterclockwise fashion, dropping beads in every hole except for the enemy's goal. If the player scores with their last bead, the player gets a second turn. In addition, if the player drops their last bead on an empty tile on their side of the board, and the enemy has a bead in a hole parallel to that tile, the player gets to collect all of those beads, scoring big. Here's some background footage of me going up against the AI that we will be creating in this video. As you can see, even with the advantage of going first, I am swiftly defeated by my own creation. This is because the AI is using an algorithm known as Minimax. Minimax is a way for a computer to think ahead and predict what the other player might do. It looks at all the possible moves that it could make, and all the possible moves that the player could make, and then it picks the move that will most likely help it win. The min part is when the computer tries to minimize the other player's chance of winning. It looks at all the moves that the player could make, and it picks the worst move for them. The max part is where the computer tries to maximize its own chances of winning. It looks at all the moves that it could make, and it picks the best move for it. The more game states that a game has, the more demanding the minimax algorithm is on the PC. For a game like Tic-Tac-Toe, where there is only four back and forth between the player and the AI, the algorithm runs relatively fast. However, in Mancala, there can be more than 10 back and forth, with some players even getting to go twice. This brings great demand onto the computer. What you will notice when we get into the code is that it is crucial to set the depth to be adjustable. A depth of 1 will allow for the AI to think one turn ahead, and a depth of 10 may allow for the AI to foresee the entire game. The current settings that the AI is set to is a depth of 6. Let's dive into the code. If you get lost during this tutorial, you can find the code in the comments and descriptions below. So, starting with the move piece function. The move piece will require a board, a tile, and a turn, and it will return back a tuple, which is the dictionary and boolean. The board has the following schema of top, bottom, top score, bottom score. This allows for the board to be shrank or have an abnormal size. The tile will indicate the index in the list, and the turn will indicate either top or bottom. We'll be returning back the board after we've modified it, as well as go again, which will indicate if the user is able to make another turn. The pieces will be set to a board, turn, tile. For instance, this could be the board, bottom, zero. We will then take the board, turn, tile and set that equal to zero now that pieces is holding the variable. Location will be set to turn because we may start on the top location and end our turn on the bottom location. Go again will be set to false. While we have pieces, we want to set go again to false, subtract one from the pieces, and add one to the tiles. What this will do is it will mimic the behavior of moving across the board. If the tile is less than the length of the board, that means that we fall within this area of the board. So we want to increase that location by one and continue on with our while loop. However, if the tile is equal to or greater than the board location, we would then be at the end of our board and we would want to edit our score. If the location is equal to the turn, we would then imply that the user has scored, so the board turn underscore score will be incremented by 1 and go again will be set to true. Else, the pieces will be incremented by 1 because we did not use the pieces for this cycle. Finally, because we've reached the end of our board, we will want to switch our locations. So we will set the location equal to the bottom if the location was equal to the top. Else, we will set the location equal to the top. And we'll finally set our tiles as negative 1, because when we re-loop around, we'll be incrementing our tiles by 1, which puts us at index 0. Once when we exhausted all of our pieces, we will go on to the following. There's an optional rule in Mancala where if the location that you end on is on your side of the board, and you end on a tile that has more than one piece, you can move that piece again. 
If you wish to play by these optional rules, feel free to comment out this code. <clears throat> Finally, there is a rule in Mancala where if you end your turn and parallel to your tile are pieces, you can collect those pieces. What you may notice is that we are always incrementing the location by one and we are never checking if we are going counterclockwise or clockwise. This is causing for our lists up top to always be going in a forward direction. That will not obey Mancala rules and what we need to do is get the inverse location. To get our inverse location, we'll set the inverse location equal to the bottom if the location was equal to the top, else to the top. Then, if our location is equal to our turn and our board location tile is equal to 1, we want to take the inverse of that tile and see if that is not equal to 0. Looking back at our schema, what this means is that if index 3, we would map to index 4. If index 0, we would map to index 5. Finally, what we want to check is if there are no longer any top pieces or bottom pieces on one side of the board, we are to sum up all of the pieces in Mancala and push them onto their sides. We'll also set go again to false for this, as even if the person scored, no one is able to move again. And then we will return the board and go again. Now let's go to the minimax section of the code. In order to perform minimax, one crucial thing we will need is to validate that the moves we are passing in are real moves. We'll need to pass through a board, a tile, a turn, and we'll return back a boolean. If the tile is greater than the board or the tile is less than zero, we'll return back false else we will return back the boolean status of the location that was provided. This is because in Python, zero will return a boolean of false and anything other than zero will return a boolean of true. Now, going back down to our minimax algorithm, we receive a board, the AI side, the turn, and how far we are into the program. The AI side will set to the AI and the player will set to the inverse by saying the player is the bottom if the AI is the top, else the top. Next, we'll set the best move to negative one. If there are no longer any top or no longer any bottoms or the depth is zero, we know that we've reached either the end state of the game or as far as we want to punish our CPU. We'll then return back the board AI score minus the board player score, and the best move will be negative one. The AI turn will be setting our best score to negative infinity. This is because we are looking to do the mini max. So we want to maximize the AI score and everything is going to be greater than negative infinity. Finally, we'll take our possible moves and we'll find that by grabbing a is viable move for all the moves that are on the board's side. For each move that is inside of our possible moves, we want to make a deep copy of the board just because of Python's references to dictionaries and we want to move the pieces of the board. Finally, we'll see if there is a go again, and if not, we will continue on. If we have the go again, we'll be using the board copy of the AI state and the depth, and if we do not have a go again, we'll be using the board copy of the player's state and the depth minus one, because it will now be the player's turn. What we'll then do is we'll gather all the points from our Mancala AI and we'll match that up with our best move. So let's scroll back up onto line 205 and take a look at this again. This point is going to be the delta between the AI score and the player score. And the best move is going to be set to negative 1. That is why we don't capture the best move on lines 224 and lines 226. But we will capture the points. And if the points are greater than our best score, 
which is currently set to negative infinity on the first iteration, we will set the best score equal to the points and the best move equal to the move that we just performed. Else, if it is the player's turn, the best score is going to be infinity. This is because we want to minimize the player's score and everything is smaller than infinity. We will gather possible moves the same way we gathered possible moves for the AI, and we will perform a very similar logic. The only difference in this is that instead of checking if the points are greater than the best score, we are now going to check if the points are less than the best score. This is because we want to minimize the possible winning chances for the opponent. Finally, we will return the best score and the best move. Congrats, and with those three functions, you should now have your own Minimax Mancala AI. The following code I will be covering are tools that you can use to interact with the code that you just wrote. First, we'll be looking at this print board function. This print board function is going to require a board and optionally the player 1's name and the player 2's name. What we will be doing is we'll be using a f string and joining all of the possible ranges of the top, the length of the top, the player's name, all of the possible items of the top reversed, since we are not to traverse this this way, but instead this way. Indication saying that it's player one, the board score, the barrier, the board score, and then the same, but now with player two. Finally, we will now be getting the player's input. It's important to realize that the player is not the creator, and they might have different understandings of the prompts that we are asking them, or they may intentionally try to break the code. When getting the player's input, it is usually best to use a while true loop. This allows for us to ask for the player to enter what they would like to do, detect if quit is within the string and exit our application, and detect the bare minimum that we need to to get what we want. This is because we do not know if the player would type out player one or just one or any iteration in between. Same with player two. Finally, if they do not type out one of those two, we want to make sure that they're aware that we did not get the response we wanted. Just as the AI needed to validate its moves, so do the players. When getting the player's moves, we want to pass through the board and the turn, and we will be returning the int, which is the move that the player made. Once again, we will enter a while troop loop, and we'll ask the player to select a move. If the player at any point does quit, we do want to quit out the application. Then we will try to turn the player's input into an integer and subtract 1. If the player did not give us an integer, we will raise a value error and continue and let the player know to please enter us a number. The reason why we are subtracting 1 is because people start at counting 1 and computers start at counting 0. Finally, we will want to check if the mood is viable, and if it is, we will return the move. Outside of that, we will tell them, sorry, please enter a valid move. Finally, we have a clear screen function, which will just print print the amount of times that we tell it to. Now that we have all of our functions set up, we can put it all together. So you'll want to have some of your base initializations. You're going to want to now make sure you get the player's type and set the AI to the opposite type of that. And then we are going to say while the game exists, because we'll be checking for if there are any tiles on the board's top or bottom, we'll be getting the player's move and acting, and then we'll be getting the AI's move and acting. If the go against state is not true, we'll be making sure to flip the turns, and then we'll clear the screen and print out the board. At the end, make sure to show the win and loss, and thank you for watching my video.